Greetings and salivations. I am Unthoth Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers. You are listening to The Eldritch God. It is well known that I support feminism, seeing as my preferred meal consists of unborn children torn from a mother's womb, Planned Parenthood would be a lot harder to keep running without feminists. I mean, if you only knew how many cultists work there, you'd freak out. However, I have noticed that nobody has taken the time to answer any of your questions. Seeing how effective answering 36 questions women have for men worked out on fighting feminism, it is clear that I must answer your questions to protect my meal ticket. So prepare to be schooled by a god. This is 100 Answered Questions. Why is it that one of you make a claim you never provide any sources or back it up with empirical evidence? 87% of all statistics are made up on the spot, so why bother? If you are really fighting for equality, why do you actively protest and disrupt men's issues conferences? To keep you in your place. Duh. Why do you complain about trivial things like manspreading and scientists wearing shirts you don't like when women in Afghanistan came and show their faces in public and girls in Somalia get the clitorites cut off? It just seems like those sorts of things should be higher up on your priority list. Plane tickets are expensive. Why do you complain about men spreading their legs too far apart on public transportation, but not about the women who take up multiple seats with their purses and shopping bags? Where are feminists going to put their bags if you spread your legs? Why don't you have any respect for the presumption of innocence at all? Because we don't see individuals, just groups. This is all about making the world just. How can you have justice if a crime goes unpunished? Since some men go unpunished, an innocent man must take his place. If the guilty man had just confessed in the first place and accepted his punishment, the rest of you wouldn't have anything to worry about. Why do you think that your feelings should take precedent over facts? Fuck off. That's why. If you're so against body shaming, why do you call men's rights activists neckbeards? Neckbeards are ugly, and we're insulting you. You do realize that healthy at any size is complete nonsense, right? Literally any doctor will tell you that being overweight is bad for you. Obesity-related diseases are responsible for a full quarter of all American deaths. It's not just a personal problem, either. The obesity epidemic contributes to the rising cost of health insurance, and this restricts access to health care for everybody else. So if you're fat, you are, in a sense, killing other people. That might be a strong way to put it, but it's kind of true and you can't really deny it. Ooh, sorry. Uh, this one's on me. Just so you know, the time of the great culling will soon be upon humanity, and I'm tricking the feminists into getting fatter. This one is all my fault. Don't worry about it. You won't have to deal with it much longer. In fact, you won't have to deal with anything ever again much longer. Why do you complain about being expected to shave your legs when I have to put a bladed instrument up to my throat and shave my neck every day and literally run the risk of killing myself just to avoid having women like you call me a neckbeard? Again, this one's all on me. I don't like fur on my food, so I'm trying to get everybody to get into shaving more. It cuts down on prep time. Seriously, the great culling is already going to eat up way too much of my personal time. Why do you condemn men for slut shaming when it's being done predominantly by women? It's basically Darwinism in action. Why is it wrong to call a woman a slut, but totally acceptable to call a man a fuckboy? Self-esteem is a poor trait to have in a slave. What's it like not having a sense of humor? I mean a real sense of humor, not that sad shriveled husk that evaporates whenever somebody says something you disagree with. I have about 40 different senses. Your humor sense is useless when you drift eternally between stars. Why do you think that you're the only ones who are ever offended by anything? It's not that we think we're the only ones offended, it's just we're the only ones who matter. Why are your feelings so much more important than the feelings of everybody else, and that the whole world should stop doing what they're doing to cater to your sensibilities? It's good to be the queen. Why are you always seeking validation? I have thousands of worshippers, and I can tell you, being the center of positive attention is awesome. You should try it sometime. Oh, wait, everyone hates you. Oh. Why isn't that whenever somebody gives you a compliment, you deliberately misinterpret it as an insult? As a means of controlling you through passive-aggressive tactics. Seriously, don't you get this? Didn't men write the art of war? Perhaps you should go read it. 
Why is that whenever a man says or does something you don't like, you instantly assume he did it because you're a woman? It puts him on the defensive and confuses the issue. Art of War. Read it. Why is everything a gendered issue with you? Everything is sexist. Do you honestly believe that men don't also get interrupted or told not to use profanity just like you do? Because real men don't get interrupted or use profanity. Only basement-dwelling neckbeards do. Why do you complain about men not showing their emotions, but then the minute they do, you revel in their male tears? Do you have any idea how tasty male tears are? Why do you assume that everything a man does has some kind of sexual motivation behind it? Because if you were trained right, it does. Does that seem like a sexist thing to assume? Discriminatory, not sexist. Big difference. Did you know that studies have found that 48% of men who cheat don't do it for sex, but do it because they feel emotionally dissatisfied in their marriages, that only 12% found their mistresses more attractive than their wives, and that only 8% do it because of sexual dissatisfaction? Don't care, still got the paycheck. If you're such a strong, independent woman, why are you always pretending to be a victim? Passive? Aggressive. How do you expect anybody to believe that you're a strong, independent woman when you sequester yourself in safe spaces to avoid having your opinions challenged and demand everybody else curtail their speech so you won't be triggered? We control the media. Boom. Mic drop. Why do you keep complaining? Oops, uh, picking up the mic again. Uh, p uh, sorry, missed that question. Why do you keep complaining about being afraid to walk to your car at night when men are statistically twice as likely to be victims of crimes by strangers? and the vast majority of rapes are committed by people familiar to the victim. We can control walking to the car. We can't control the other things. Statistically, the vast majority of child murders are committed by women. So why is teach men not to rape a valid argument, but teach women not to kill kids isn't? Again, this one is on me. I like eating babies, so I work hard to promote a culture where it's permitted to murder your children. My bad. Why do you always have unnatural hair colors? Is it because your millennial narcissism makes you crave attention? Yup. Why isn't that whenever the vast majority of people disagree with you, instead of reevaluating your position, you hold that up as proof of why we need feminism? Because we live in a rape culture. Is it because your millennial narcissism won't allow you to admit when you're wrong? No. It's because if you never quit and never give up, you never lose. And just because you suck at arguing doesn't mean we have to fight fair. Instead of complaining that there aren't enough realistic depictions of women in movies and video games, why don't you just make your own damn movies and video games? No one would buy them. I mean, there are people shooting entire movies on iPhones now and getting them distributed, so what's your excuse? That's a whole lot of work when I can just get someone else to do it. Is it because your millennial narcissism makes you feel entitled to demand that everybody else change the way they do things to cater to your own personal tastes? No, it's because I have better things to do with my time, and it is much faster and easier to get you to do any little thing that pops into my head. Why isn't it all of your feelings or always somebody else's fault? I'm perfect. It must be you. Is it because your millennial narcissism won't let you ever be at fault? And what is it with this millennial narcissism crap over and over? Look, when you get to be thousands of years old, you too can be a narcissistic millennial old god. Why do you always assume that whenever a man interrupts you, it's because you're a woman? Because it fills women with hate. Hate is the most powerful thing in the universe. Look at Star Wars. The first three. How did thousands of Jedi lose control of the galaxy over three movies to a mere three Sith, of which two were pawns? Hate. That's how. How did Luke really take down Darth Vader? Hate. After the Rebels won in the sixth movie, everything was fine. But by the 7th, what happened? The new Jedi Order destroyed by hate. And then a planet blew up because of, yep, you guessed it, hate. Why do feminists never use facts or figures? Because hate wins. Hate trumps facts. Hate crushes your truth. In the end, feelings first and facts follow. And since we always use feelings and you always use facts, we will always go first and you will always lose. Maybe he's interrupting you just because he's an asshole and he interrupts everybody. Or maybe he's interrupting you because he already knows that you don't know what you're talking about. Do you really expect people to believe that you've never been interrupted by a woman before? Yup. Because women are perfect and we have to tote the party line. Why do you think that violence against men is so funny when violence against women is so abhorrent? Go watch a video of a man getting kicked in the balls by a woman. Did you laugh? 
there you go. If women are just as strong as men, why are there so few women working as construction workers, coal miners, loggers, sewer line maintenance workers, or doing any of the other dirty, dangerous jobs that men do to make your first world lives comfortable? You can't blame it on hiring discrimination when women make up about half of the workforce, yet only 7% of workplace fatalities. Those jobs suck. If women are just as strong as men, why do you keep demanding fire departments and the military to lower their standards for women? So women can get promoted and have control over men. If we live in a rape culture, which you insist celebrates and protects rapists, why is it that the mere accusation of rape is enough to ruin a man's life? Because we live in a rape culture. Did you know that RAIN, the largest anti-sexual assault organization in the USA, says rape culture doesn't exist, and that the very notion of a rape culture is actually detrimental to the prevention of rape? No. I did not know that. Thanks for pointing it out. I'll get my minions on it right now. Thanks for pointing it out. Check back in a full months. I'll make sure it rains examples of rape culture. Why do you uncritically believe it when a woman claims to have been raped, and then proceed to bully the alleged rapist to the point where he fears for his own safety, even when the woman provides no evidence for her rape accusation at all? Rape culture! How do you expect people to take rape claims seriously when you've expanded the definition of rape so broadly that a rape claim could mean anything from somebody holding you down and forcibly sticking his penis in you to simply looking at you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable? I control the media. Have you ever hurt yourself performing the mental gymnastics necessary to rationalize how it's not sexist to make patently sexist statements about men? Nope. Why do you insist on portraying domestic violence as a completely one-sided issue when the Centers for Disease Control has found that women are the perpetrators in more than 70% of non-reciprocated domestic violence cases, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has found that mothers are twice as likely than fathers to abuse children? Again, my bad. If pornography normalizes rape, it makes men more likely to rape women. Why is it that literally every credible study ever conducted on this subject has found the exact opposite to be the case? Because we live in a rape culture. If you want there to be more women working in STEM fields, why did you decide to major in gender studies instead? STEMs look like penises, and feminists hate penises. If you just renamed STEM fields into something else more... vagina-y, I'm sure more women would study them. Why is that when it comes to women who don't self-identify as feminists, you don't understand that no means no? Actually, little known fact, no actually means no-ish. Why do you dismiss all women who criticize the modern feminist movement as having internalized misogyny? Because we live in a rape culture. How do you not see the inherent irony in dismissing female critics of the feminist movement as having internalized misogyny? You're basically saying, women are so stupid and weak-willed that if they don't agree with me, then they must be brainwashed by the patriarchy because women are incapable of forming their own opinions or coming to their own conclusions without somebody telling them what to think. Easy. Watch this. And done. Wasn't that easy? You always complain about feminism being seen as a dirty word. Have you ever actually taken the time to step back and see why that is? Nope. Why is it that when a man doesn't like you, you arrogantly assume it's because he's intimidated by your intelligence? Remember the part about how hate is the strongest force in the universe? There you go. Couldn't it be because he doesn't want to be around somebody who prejudges and vilifies him as a potential rapist and considers him unworthy of consideration because he has privilege, or that he's put off by your special snowflake syndrome and lack of self-awareness, or that some guys just plain don't like stupid girls? No. You stigmatize all men as potential wife beaters and rapists. You try to get men banned from certain places on campuses. You protest men's issues conferences. You dismiss men as misogynists for even talking about their own problems and you dismiss men's opinions on gender issues out of hand. So where do you get off asserting that anti-feminist men are just afraid of having their privilege taken away? Because we live in a rape culture. Where do you get off saying that sexism towards men doesn't exist because it isn't systemic and institutionalized when A. I can point to numerous examples of systemic and institutionalized sexism against men, a lot of which is actually the direct result of feminism, and B. Who says gender-based prejudice and discrimination have to be systemic and institutionalized for it to count as sexism? It seems to me that this is just something you made up to give yourself a free pass for your own bigotry. Usually in the bedroom. Why is it bad when men are sexist, but empowering when women are sexist? Because we still live in a rape culture. You are the ones who have all of the institutional advantages when it comes to child custody, selective service, availability of healthcare, social safety nets, and sentencing for crimes. 
Plus, when you're the victims of domestic abuse, it's actually taken seriously and people don't laugh at you. Nor is it automatically assumed that you did something to deserve it. Nor are you told to woman up when you complain about it. Not only that, but if you rape a man or even an underage boy and get pregnant from it, you have the power to sue them for child support. So with all that in mind, why are you so afraid of recognizing your privilege? Again, because we live in a rape culture. Damn, I love this answer. It just fits everything. Where do you get off claiming that anybody who doesn't identify as a feminist is automatically a sexist? Again, in the bedroom. That's where polite people get off. What, were you raised in a barn? Why do you think that feminism owns the concept of equality? Ah, I filed for the trademark and copyright. I own it flat out. Feminism is licensing it from me. Plus, you should be spelling it equality TM. Don't forget to say the TM, or I'll sue you. And eat your soul. Doesn't that seem a bit arrogant of you? Yup. And how is that any different than the fundamentalist Christians who think Christianity owns the concept of morality and say anybody who isn't a Christian is an immoral, untrustworthy miscreant? Look, I hate those monotheists going their own way as much as the next god, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If feminism is about equality, why do you vilify and advocate violence against men? I am a ball of incandescent hate. Your suffering amuses me. Are you really sure you want to be equal to men? Because that would require you to give up all of your reproductive rights. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. But I already have all the reproductive rights of both males and females, so don't worry about them having the edge on this one. And honestly, I'm doing a much better job than you morons ever could. If feminists are against violence, why did the Order of the White Feather use shaming, humiliation, and intimidation to pressure men in England into fighting in the First World War? To force men to take their violence somewhere far away from women. If you don't hate men, why do you bully your own sons? To turn them into hyper-aggressive super-achievers who have no loyalty to any group, country, or faction. Sure, 95% of boys will turn into broken losers, but the surviving 5% that turn into total sociopaths will make excellent warrior slaves for my interstellar army. Why is it sexist to hold a door open for a woman? Oh, uh, that's just to mess with you. When did being polite and doing nice things that you would do for anybody regardless of gender become sexist? 1996. Why do you evoke the no true Scotsman fallacy whenever somebody points out how other feminists are promoting inequality and outright hatred of men? It derails your arguments and we win. Why do you mock men for saying not all men in response to you making broad generalizations about men? Note that not all men is not a no true Scotsman argument because men as a whole are not an ideological group with a single stated goal in common like feminists are. We want to win the argument. Most of you are aware that feminism has become a toxic label, so instead of engaging in damage control, why don't those of you who are less radical just drop the label in favor of one that doesn't carry so much negative baggage? Because hate is so powerful. What's so wrong with calling yourself a humanist or an egalitarian if you actually believe in equality? Because the trademark has entered the public domain on those two. Why do you assert that rape culture is about the systemic oppression of women by men, even though a rape accusation is all it takes to ruin a man's life whether or not he's actually guilty? Rape was defined by the FBI in such a way as to exclude male victims of rape entirely until 2013, and rape is, by and large, only taken seriously when it happens to women. Even children's cartoons make jokes about male rape. Because we live in a rape culture. Did you know that in the United States, a man is more likely to be raped in prison than a woman is to be raped anywhere outside of prison? No, no I did not. And I don't care either. In fact, I am unclear as to what this whole rape thing is anyways. Why do you keep talking about it? It's like a plant, right? You plant the rape seed and it grows into a rape. You get bunches of rapes in the store. The violet ones taste better than the green ones, I'm told. Why do humans care so much about produce anyways? I don't understand you three-dimensional finite mammals at all. Why do you defend women who commit statutory rape? Rape culture! Have you ever been falsely accused of sexual harassment or rape? Rape... culture. If feminism is all about equality, why do you demand affirmative action quotas for women? To put my minions into positions of power in your culture. If you actually believe that women are just as capable as men, wouldn't you rather have women be judged and accepted based on their merits instead of whether or not they have a vagina? Oh no. No no. My minions are really stupid. I have to keep reminding myself not to ask, 
why am I surrounded by fools? Because the answer is, that's right, I killed all the smart ones who were a threat. Why haven't I been invited to any patriarchy meetings? You need to get on the mailing list. Contact your nearest ISIS representative and send them your email address. Where's my male privilege care package? I don't know. I thought they left it at your front door. Maybe your neighbor stole it. Can't you afford to live in a better neighbor? Ooh. Alimony, right? Uh, awkward. If gender is a... What in the plane of resplendent agonies is it with this wall of text? Seriously. Getting a me-damned headache. And I'm an nth dimensional being. My head exists across all realities. When I get a headache, entire universes stop existing. All right, rant over. Back to the question. If gender is a social construct, and there are no true biological differences between male and female psychology, ignoring the indisputable fact that male and female brains have physiological differences which undoubtedly affect their psychology, why do you keep making sweeping generalizations about men? Blah, 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 blah. Rape culture. I mean, if you believe that masculine and feminine behavior are both learned, a notion which science has conclusively proven wrong, by the way, why do you keep insisting that men are violent by nature? Despite the fact that studies have found that women are actually more likely to be physically abusive to their domestic partners, as well as more abusive to children. So you feel guilty about feeling rage and hate. Thus, we have the hate, you have the facts, and we win. Did you know that, with the exception of bisexual women, lesbians statistically experience more intimate partner violence than any other demographic? Of course. Also, gay men experience the least intimate partner violence of anybody. If men are the violent ones, why would this be the case? What do we have behind door number three? Rape culture! Why are you so obsessed with period blood? If a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, why do you continue demanding alimony and child support payments? I'll try and put this in a way that you'll understand. MONEY! Did you know that a survey by Pew Research Center found that men face substantially more online harassment than women? Yup. Still don't care. Why do you label people who disagree with you or prove you wrong as harassers and sexists? Again, to win the argument. Art of War. Read it. Why do you disable comments and ratings on your videos? Is it really because of harassment, or is it because ideas based on unsourced statistics and feelings instead of facts can't stand up to scrutiny? Actually, we do it just to piss you off. Why do you think you understand how men think better than men do? I can read minds. Why do you complain about not being allowed to show your breasts in public while also complaining about men looking at your breasts? Again, just messing with you. Why do you go out of your way to undermine fathers' rights and shared custody when studies have found that children raised in single mother families are substantially more likely to grow up with mental disorders and end up addicted to drugs or in prison? Two reasons. One, the kid is a paycheck. Two, I'm turning men into sociopaths and I want to reach my 5% goal as soon as possible. And if you are one of the 5% who are turning into total sociopaths, congrats! Not only will you survive the Great Culling, you will be performing the Great Culling. Just to show no hard feelings, I'll let you start on the feminists. Be sure to get the fat ones first. When society breaks down, they'll start losing weight when the food runs out. I like me meat jiggly. Why do you go out of your way to undermine father's rights and shared custody, but then complain about losing money because of having to take time off from work to raise kids by yourself? Are you stupid? Can't you peer into the future and listen to my answers before I make them? I will have told you this already. Passive-aggressive whining makes people do things for you for free. It's like talking to a wall. Why do you hate stay-at-home moms so much? I thought you were all about a woman's right to choose what she does with her life. Because stay-at-home moms have sons that are well-adjusted human beings. It makes it much harder to reach my quota of male sociopaths. Why do you keep pushing for- YET ANOTHER TEXT WALL! Why do you keep pushing for female versions of male characters just for the sake of equal representation in media instead of coming up with new characters entirely? I mean, how does appropriating a male character with an already established backstory empower women more than creating a completely original female character with her own unique personality and traits? If anything, you're tacitly implying that a strong female character has to be a man to be compelling. Furthermore, isn't shoehorning a female character into something just for the sake of having one the very definition of tokenism? It all seems very self-defeating. Wait, 
Wait, wait, wait. Is this the Thor thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Look, uh, me and Thor had a falling out. He kept going on and on about he was still being worshipped in the modern age because of the Marvel comics, and, well, I got a little pissed about that, so... I had Marvel change his character into a woman. It took quite a bit of political capital to pull that off. And I guess there might be a bit of collateral damage as it ripples through comic subculture. But that was just me yanking Thor's chain. I'll I'll stop. You can you can put it back the way it was. It stopped being funny anyways. Why do we still have women only scholarships and gender quotas giving advantages to women in college, even though women have made up the majority of college students and graduates since the 1970s? Ah, uh, a two-part answer. One. I give women better grades and scores to inflate their sense of self-importance. They don't try as hard, and thus aren't as big of a threat to me. Nothing more dangerous than a smart minion. Why do you think I have teachers tell little girls, No matter what anybody is saying around you, or what the people look like around you, you are perfect the way that you are. Because you're worth everything. It's just my way of saying, it's all downhill from here. Give up. Don't let anyone define what the real world is for you. We all have our own worlds to conquer. There is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't get exactly what you want from life. And that's my way of saying, live in your own personal imaginary world. Leave objective reality to me. Do. I make grades K through 12 and college a Batan death march so it gets rid of all the weak males. You either commit suicide, go insane, become so broken as to become worthless, and thus a bottom feeder slave, you drop out of society entirely and become a herbivore male, or you snap and realize the truth. Nobody loves you, nobody cares about you, no one is coming to save you. Things will never get any better than right now. If you lie down, you die. Get back up because right now is the best chance you've got for survival. It turns men into grim, selfish, heartless, relentless determinators that have absolutely no loyalty to, to anyone or anything but themselves. They are forever driven by a relentless fear of scarcity. It drives them insane as they come to believe that they are ahead of the curve. Why do you think so many politicians today are willing to grind the government to a halt just to get what they want? Why do you think there's no such thing as compromise anymore? Why do you think there are so many CEOs and upper management willing to take companies that have been around for hundreds of years and burn the place to the ground just to squeeze out a little extra personal profit? It's because they believe they are starving in a land of plenty. And oh, do I have such a wonderful bumper crap of type A plus personalities. Soon, soon my minions, soon. If it's true that one in five women gets raped in college, it's not. Why do you keep enrolling? And the answer is... Rape culture! Circle gets the square! I mean, is it really worth the risk to get that useless gender studies degree? And yet the women with gender studies degrees are kicking your ass. Not so useless now, is it, loser? If the patriarchy is keeping women out of some STEM fields, why isn't it keeping women out of female-dominated fields such as veterinary medicine, psychology, biology, and pharmacology? Rape culture! Wait, no, no, that one didn't make any sense. Uh, hmm. Well, because the patriarchy. Which would be, uh, my type A plus males who currently dominate your culture. They really don't see a whole lot of power to be gained in those useless fields. So best to just let the women be the healers because, well, any gamer knows that being a heal bot is useless without someone else to soak up the aggro. It just makes it easier to take out the females during the Great Colin. Why don't you push for gender equality in female-dominated fields? Why would I want to lose? Why would I want to lose? Hmm, let me think here. Let me think, uh... How do I flip out some... How do I flip somebody over the internet? Is there a... Is there a button I can press here that just pops up a finger? No? Okay, never mind. Why don't you ever demand gender quotas for dirty and dangerous jobs, like mining, garbage collection, sewer line maintenance, logging, construction, and so on? Women seem pretty underrepresented in those fields. Again, I need tough males for tough jobs. And a tough life makes a tough male. Weakness is pain leaving the body. I need men who will work for 14 hours straight on a pair of broken legs because quitting is never an option. 
I need a sociopathic version of John McClane from the Die Hard movies. Or a Samuel L. Jackson, I'm not racist. And just to be clear, it's only the mental outlook, not your body, that matters. Your body is going to be the first thing to be replaced, and I need men with the right outlook to survive the process without going into a death spiral of depression. I need men who think being put into a biot, or biological robot body, is a good thing. And it is. It's fun. If you happen to never like sleeping again. Dreams are for pussies. If sex robots dehumanize and perpetuate the objectification of women, couldn't the same thing be said about dildos and men? Yes, but the real threat is, I don't want men getting turned on by robots. Because the last thing I need is my new biot hunter killer teams humping each other in their downtime. If a man doesn't find fat women attractive, then he's fat shaming and that's sexist. But if he does find fat women attractive, then he's fetishizing them and that's also sexist. Is there any way to deal with fat women that isn't sexist? Yes. Go insane. How do you feel about the Jim Crow laws? I don't. Why do you hold women responsible for their own actions when it comes to drunk driving, but not when it comes to drunk sex? Wait, we hold women responsible when they drive drunk? Again, thanks for pointing out something I missed. I'll get right on it. Did you know that it's the father's genes which determine the sex of the offspring, whether it's male or female? Why do you think I only want male minions after the great culling? If on the odd chance I need to recreate females later, I can do it with two males. I can't make males from just females. Seriously, are you trolling me? You really aren't this stupid, are you? Why do you think women should be paid the same amount on average as men when the average man works longer hours, is more likely to ask for raises, takes less time off, is more competitive, is more likely to take risks, prioritizes earnings more, and retires at a later age? Rape culture! Oh, no, oh, damn it, I figured that was the answer. It's about time to use it again. Uh, money! Money! The answer is money. Feminists like money. Did you know that men pay Another text wall. Seriously, first thing after the great culling, no more written language. Everyone gets a brain mollusk and it's nothing but telepathy from there on out. Did you know that men pay more income tax than women out of proportion to the earnings gap? No. The earnings gap is usually said to be only between 20 and 30 percent. But in 2009, American men filing non-joint tax returns paid about 40% more tax on their wages than women, and self-employed men paid 30% more on their income tax than self-employed women. It should also be pointed out that more women than men filed income tax returns in 2009, 99.8 million women versus 94.2 million men, and yet men still paid more income tax overall. How is that fair? Money. Why is somebody a rape apologist for suggesting that the accused should be given due process in a fair trial? Well, men kept complaining about unfairness in rape trials, so I told my minions, start creating rape apologists. I figured they would apologize to men who have been falsely accused of rape. But I don't get is why you think apologies are bad. Why is that whenever it's pointed- Wall. Of. Fucking. Text. Why is that whenever it's pointed out that women in places like Afghanistan have it significantly worse than you do while you're sitting here complaining about catcalling and manspreading? Your default response seems to be, just because somebody has it worse, that doesn't mean we shouldn't complain about our problems over here. But whenever somebody tries to talk about men's issues, your default response is, us women have it worse, so shut up. Look, this is one huge run-on sentence, okay? Just, just get to the point. See, this is why you lose. You try to explain too much. Meanwhile, the woman is already screeching in your face, calling the police, and having you arrested for assault. You are a stupid moron. Also, the word but, never use it. It's a dumb word. It means everything I just said, ignore it. Example, I like you, but you are a crypt ghoul. But to people here, you are a crypt ghoul. That's all they hear. So the answer to your question is, because that's how we win arguments. How do you fail to realize that calling everything sexist, racist, and rape does nothing but devalue the terms through overuse and make people less likely to take claims of sexism, racism, and rape seriously? Oh, I do. But trust me, those words won't have to retain value too much longer. How does people simply disagreeing with you make you feel unsafe? Because when people disagree with me, they aren't doing as they are told. I don't feel safe around a malfunctioning minion. Why do you believe that the transgressions of men in the past who aren't even alive anymore makes it okay to disenfranchise and dismiss the issues of boys and men today? I'm nth dimensional. Your concepts of past, present, and future mean nothing to me. 
why do you think women need safe spaces? But are adamantly opposed to the idea of men having safe spaces as well, even though men are statistically far more likely to be victims of violence. Because I want women to be fat and weak and easy to call, and men to be tough as shogoths. Because you're going to be fighting shogoths. Why do you argue that we don't need an International Men's Day because every day is Men's Day, even though gender issues discussions in academia and public forums are exclusively concerned with the issues of women to such an extent that most people don't even realize that men have any issues at all? Again, having a Men's Day will only make you weak. Seriously, I feel like a broken brain mollusk. If feminism is about equality, why do you demand that gender issues discussions be completely one-sided, and then downplay, dismiss, or ignore the high rates of violence, homelessness, and suicide among men, as well as the difficulties faced by boys and men in education? That only affects weak men. Who cares about weak men? Why are you weak? Why do you feel that equality is a zero-sum game? The Laws of Thermodynamics What legal rights do men in Western democracies have that women in Western democracies don't also have, if any? You have the right to survive the great culling if you prove yourself worthy. Frankly, all these feminists are going to be dehydrated, ground into powder, and shipped to the front lines of the blood space war as food. You see, the carnivores, they've been getting their asses kicked lately, but they're still flush with cash. I suspect they will outbid everybody else, but we will see. We will see.